Who was murdered? The lousy stupid. Never shut up. Let him talk. But Look, you... sir, the man's in no condition to talk about anything. We killed him, that's what about him. He told him some poor guy who was planning to escape. And so we killed him. And your son, your wonderful son. All right. All right. Come on. Come on, Lieutenant. Come on. Come on. All right, Baker, get him. Yep. Yeah. What was he going to say? Sir, the man was hysterical. Anything he was going to say would have meant absolutely nothing. You wouldn't have hit him if you didn't know what he was going to say. It was something about my son planning to escape. What was it? It wouldn't do any good, sir. Colonel, I'm ordering you to give me information relative to a case under my jurisdiction. Do you refuse? No, sir. Very well, then. The name of the man who betrayed my son. You see what I mean about the truth? You keep your clever remarks to yourself, Major. Believe me, sir, I was not trying to be clever. That's all for now, Cargo. Your excuse. Just a moment, Major. You feel pretty safe and smug here, don't you, Cargo? Hiding behind due process of law. Please, sir. It galls me to see traitors like you being coddled here. Sir, I beg you to leave this man alone. Suppose you tell me who betrayed my son, Major. I insist you leave him alone. I'm interrogating him, Colonel. All right, Major, who was it? Who betrayed my son? I... I can't answer that, sir. Can't you? Honor among traitors, is that it? One dirty swine protecting another? One lousy collaborator. Damn it, sir, stop it! I, I, I'm sorry, sir, but I, I just couldn't let you go on that way, not without knowing the truth. Your son wasn't betrayed. He wasn't killed by the enemy. He was killed by his own men. He was the stool pigeon. It's a lie. No, sir, it's the truth. It's a lie you made up to protect this man. It's the truth, sir. You have no proof. I have. Conclusive proof. My son, he was raised to know better, to be better. I can't forgive cowardice, especially in my own son. Why? That's right. Why? Why are we always so much quicker to blame those we love rather than those we hate? Is it because weakness in them is somehow weakness in ourselves? Is that it? I didn't love your son, General, but I didn't hate him either, so maybe I'll be allowed to speak a few words on his behalf. A man can be a hero all his life, but if in the last month of it, or the last week, or even the last minute, the pressure becomes too great and he breaks, then he's branded for life. You can't ask a man to be a hero forever. There ought to be a time limit. There is no defense for treason. I wouldn't use words like treason if I were you, and I would never set myself up to judge anybody. Just don't be a hero on somebody else's time, General. And don't ever hate a man for what he does under pressure. Your son was a hero. 
I give you my word, hundreds of days he was a hero, and only one day did he break. Well, in the name of God, aren't all those other days worth something? Does he lose his standing in the human race because he broke on that one last day? They didn't understand, so they killed him. But at least they thought they had a reason to save their lives. But what reason have you got, General? A set of rules, a code? Well, it's not enough. Because you don't have a code that fits a man to face them. Your code doesn't have all the answers, not all the answers. All right, Major, you've said enough. No, sir, I've not said enough. Your son was a human being and somebody's going to speak for him. My son is dead. And there's a dignity in that, no matter how he died. But you, Major, are alive. And I'll be damned if I'll stand here and allow you to attack a code that better men than you have lived and died by. The code? The co how much does the code ask of a man? Everything. If the man's a soldier, his life. His life? You think that's the most that a man can lose? What are you talking about? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. You're in a prison camp. Nobody breaks. Months and months of cold and torture and starvation and nobody breaks. And then one day a man does break and his own men kill him for it. And the commander of the camp is furious because he's been robbed of the one victory he's been able to achieve. So he calls in the ranking officer and he says to him, I have reached the limit of my patience. Either you cooperate or I kill all 16 men. What would you do, General? I want an answer. What would you do? Stand fast? Let them all be killed? That is a chance you have to take. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's the answer. For heroes. But I was no hero. I couldn't take that chance. To me, those 16 men, the wives, the families, they seemed important. They still seem important. How many lies for a man's life, hmm? I don't know. I just gave them everything they wanted. Everything. record he wasn't the kind of man who'd do something like this for a selfish reason. He couldn't defend himself without incriminating 16 other men. I'm sorry about this man and everything that's happened to him. And it's precisely because I'm sorry that I know why we need the code. I want your recommendation at once. General, this is an extremely harsh application of the rule. Is it? This man's had it. No man's exempt. Not this man, not my son, no one. Because after you've said everything that could be said, the fact would remain. He did help the enemy. Sir, I think it's only fair to tell you if he's brought to trial, I'd like to defend him. That's your privilege, Bill. Major Cargill. You asked me a question. You at least deserve an answer. The choice that you had to make in that prison camp was no different than the choice that confronts every military leader. The decision involving the life or death of his men. You were a sensitive man. A humane man. I sympathize with that man, but you are also a soldier. And as a soldier, you have failed, just as my son failed. You talk to me of 16 men. Multiply that by thousands. Try carrying that weight on your shoulders. Try sleeping with the cries of those wives and children in your ears. I've done that, Major. Every wartime commander has done it. Because until a better world is built, it's got to be done. That is why we have the code, Major. 
The code is our Bible, and thank God for it. I'll be waiting for your recommendation, Bill. Under the circumstances, I will, of course, disqualify myself. wrong and I should be tried. Reasons don't matter. Reasons do matter. When a man's mind is attacked, how does he protect himself? How does he fight back? You didn't tell the other men why you went over, did you? Part of your deal with Colonel Kim? Evans, take this, will you? Concerning the charges in the case of Major Harry Cargill, recommendation is as follows. Considerable evidence has been amassed to prove that Major Cargill willingly collaborated with the enemy. There is now also evidence to indicate that he did so unselfishly and to preserve the lives of his fellow prisoners. Although he was mistaken in his judgment, he was surely no traitor. Therefore, I personally recommend that all charges be dropped and no court-martial be convened. Now, uh, don't let that recommendation fool you. There'll be a court-martial. Oh, I expect that. It's, it's just good to know that somebody understands. Well, we've got a long way to go. Can you be here tomorrow morning? Yes, sir, I'll be here. We free at 8, Evans? Yes, sir, we're free. Eight o'clock, then. And Major? Give my regards to your wife. Yes, sir. Colonel. Do you think we can get the answers this way? Well, I can promise you one thing, Major. They'll know we ask the questions. process of law. Please, sir. It galls me to see traitors like you being coddled here. Sir, I beg you to leave this man alone. Suppose you tell me who betrayed my son, Major. I insist you leave him alone. I'm interrogating him, Colonel. All right, Major, who was it? Who betrayed my son? I... I can't answer that, sir. Can't you? Honor among traitors, is that it? One dirty swine protecting another? One lousy collaborator. Damn it, sir, stop it! Who was murdered? The lousy soup. Never shut up! Let him talk. Look, you... sir, the man's in no condition to talk about anything. We killed him, that's what about it. He told him some poor guy who was planning to escape. And so we killed him. And your son, your wonderful son! All right. All right, come on. Come on, Lieutenant. Come on. All right, Baker, get him. Yep. What was he going to say? Sir, the man was hysterical. Anything he was going to say would have meant absolutely nothing. You wouldn't have hit him if you didn't know what he was going to say. It was something about my son planning to escape. What was it? It wouldn't do any good, sir. Colonel, I'm ordering you to give me information relative to a case under my jurisdiction. Do you refuse? 
No, sir. Very well, then. The name of the man who betrayed my son. You see what I mean about the truth? You keep your clever remarks to yourself, Major. Believe me, sir, I was not trying to be clever. That's all for now, Cargo. Your excuse. Just a moment, Major. You feel pretty safe and smug here, don't you, Cargo? Hiding... I, I'm sorry, sir, but I, I just couldn't let you go on that way, not without knowing the truth. Your son wasn't betrayed. He wasn't killed by the enemy. He was killed by his own men. He was the stool pigeon.